Hey, good morning. Happy Thursday. We're almost to Friday. I'm Sarah Smith. I'm a horticulturalist here at Rogers Gardens. And in this live today, I'm talking about our plant of the week because we are in hummingbird summer. Uh, every single Thursday, I've been bringing to you a different plant that the hummingbirds absolutely love uh, to introduce you to some different things that you can add into your garden to draw in all those hummingbirds. Uh, this has been a really, really fun uh, summer. This is our second round of the hummingbird summer. Last year was the first year that we did it. And it was so successful and so much fun. We basically have gathered all the different hummingbird loving uh, plants or all the plants that hummingbirds love, I should say, and put them all in one area. And the funniest thing is they figure it out so fast and the hummingbird activity is just completely bonkers uh, in that area. So we gather all the salvias, which I've already talked to you about. We gather all the kufias, which I've already talked to you about. And if you missed any of those, you can go back and watch those on our Instagram or our Facebook page. We also have them on our YouTube as well. So it'll be the hummingbird plant of the week. So there's a lot of different things. And this one is monkey flowers so today I'm gonna to be talking to you all about monkey flower and if we're lucky we'll get some hummingbird activity coming through here because they seem to really uh, get pretty active when I first start they get a little scared because it's loud and then they kind of relax and come and hang out with us uh, so this is monkey flower this is a California native not all monkey flowers are a California native sometimes they call it sticky monkey flower which I think is such a funny name um, they call it monkey flower because they say that the flower face looks like a monkey I don't see it <laughs> I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe if you really stretch your imagination. Uh, but uh, they come in these beautiful kind of orangey apricot colors. There's some kind of almost burgundy-ish colors in there um, as well. So it's a variety of colors, but usually like white-ish creams to oranges to reddies to apricotties to burgundy colors. Um, but it is a California native, so it takes a little bit of finessing to get it in the ground and get it nicely established. Uh, but if you already do California natives or you have an area that uh, is really, really kind of a dry, hot area um, where you have really good drainage, this is a great one. So like last week I was talking to you about Lantana, these would be really happy together because they have very similar requirements. A little bit of water to get them established, but you definitely don't want to overwater them and definitely a full sun plant. So this is something where you want to make sure that they're at least getting like five to six hours of sun. They can take a little bit of dappling shade. So if you have it planted underneath something uh, that gives it some kind of dappling shade in the afternoon, that would be okay. Uh, but it does not want to be in the shade and it does not want to be extra super moist. So uh, really be wary of um, mulching too much too quickly underneath it until it gets established. Uh, that could be definitely an issue uh, of having it too wet and too soggy in the beginning. So you just really want to kind of pay attention to that good draining soil. So if you're going to do it in a pot, which you can absolutely do it in a pot, uh, make sure that you're using like a cactus mix. You can mix it with a little bit of regular potting soil, but I wouldn't do just straight, really heavy, super fertile potting soil. Uh, think a little bit more succulenty. Uh, this actually would do really well as some kind of flower addition to a succulent garden if you want to kind of add a little bit. And they kind of have that pretty deserty sort of um, wild look to them, which is kind of cool. They look really nicely planted in like drifts um, when someone uh, plants like a couple together kind of in a little bit more of a natural sort of look. Um, I would stay away from doing like little rows of them because they do have a little bit more of that wild kind of look. Some are a little more upright and some are a little bit more sprawling. Um, as you can see with these two, like especially these two, look at the difference in how those are growing, right? Um, this one here is the burst orange. I love this one. I think this one's so, so pretty. The color is so great. Um, but they don't need a lot of fertilizer um, either. So they're not something that's really super super picky and finicky in that way. They don't need a lot of deadheading. If you wanted to go through and clean it up, that's totally fine. Like this one here, I picked and I was looking at it and I thought, okay, it needs to be cleaned up. And all you really gotta do is go and pull out the flowers um, just to make it look nice and cleaned up. But it's not something that particularly needs a lot of deadheading or anything like that either. Um, if you are going to do a trim back, you wanna do that in the spring. So around the same time you'd be doing your salvia. So if you're cutting back your salvias down to the new growth that you see down below, you're gonna do the same thing thing uh, with your monkey flower. So um, and pairs really nice with the salvia because the salvia is very pretty and very upright, uh, especially if you're doing like the blue salvias with the orange, blue and orange, such a great combination together as well. So they're actually very um, pretty kind of neat um, low water uh, plants, which is really great. Um, very water wise, especially for this time of year. 
uh, and with the water restrictions that we've gone into, this is a really good one uh, to get into the garden. If you want to add some flowers to an area that has, say, succulents and stuff like that, and you want to make it look a little bit more flowery, a little bit more soft, this is a really good one for that. Because if your succulents are happy, this will definitely be happy uh, as well. So it's really nice. Also, too, these are host plants, so not just for hummingbirds. And typically, this is how it works. If the hummingbirds like it, chances are the bees like it, chances are the butterflies like it. It has a lot of nectar in the flowers. So uh, that's how you can always know um, what it's going to attract. If you see bees around something like this that has a nice deep throat, you know that the hummingbirds are going to really like it too. Um, but the common buckeye and the Baltimore checker spot, I had to write that second one down. The Baltimore checker spot's not a, a butterfly I'm super oh, um, you know, familiar with, but uh, the Baltimore, the common um Buckeye one, I see a lot. These are host plants for those too. So uh, you'll also be bringing in uh, the butterfly and bee population as well, which is really kind of cool. So a lot of times, if you got something that's attracting hummingbirds, it's attracting all the other stuff as well. So it's really kind of nice to add stuff into the garden. It's gonna draw in all of the little critters and stuff and give them a source for food, uh, which is really important, especially since, you know, we're getting more and more houses and less and less garden space. It's nice to add back and actually attract all of the uh, little critters that are unfortunately having to go off into the hillside. So it's really kind of amazing to be able to do that and see them, especially come up to something that's, you know, a California native and just, you know, it's so kind of magical to think, okay, look, I'm, I'm offering a food source and kind of doing my part gardening with a purpose. That's, that's really important. Um, to get them established, like I said, a little bit more water in the beginning. You just want to slow deep water these so that way the water goes down deep in the ground and then cut it for a handful of days. You do not want to keep the top constantly moist because you're trying to get those roots to go down. That's good advice for your whole entire gardening. Oh, we did have a little hummingbird for a second. Um, to get your garden established and to make your garden really happy and to also really survive during the hot months, you wanna make sure that you're not keeping the top part of the soil constantly moist all the time. You wanna make sure that you're watering deeply, but that you're cutting the water so the top is drying out, so the roots are deep. So when it does get hot, the plant doesn't struggle because all of the roots are up high and they're getting too hot. Uh, that is good practice all the time. And here we have a little one, hi, it's a little Alan. It's down there, he's being shy though. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, really great plant to uh, draw in all those um, different hummingbirds, the different butterflies, all the bees, uh, the the bumblebees, the hummingbees, uh, uh, sorry, the <laughs> bumblebees and the honeybees into the garden as well. So if we have any questions, we are live, so we can answer those questions for you live. If you stumbled into this a little bit later, or you're watching it from past ones, it brought you into this one, uh, go ahead and still put your questions down there because we will still answer those for you uh, in the comments as well. So I'll answer questions now and then we'll cut off and then, um, you can go and enjoy your day. So do we con Do we have any questions? Yes, what yeah. is the name of today's plant? Oh yeah, so <laughs> this is the, sorry, this is the uh, monkey flower. They sometimes call it the sticky monkey flower. Uh, the botanical name is um, Mimula. See, there is a little Alan over there just going crazy. I just wanted to come over here, but I'm being a little bit too loud. It's so funny because I'm watching him stick his little beak down into all the flowers, but the top of his beak is all kind of pollinated from all the pollen on there so it always looks kind of funny like they've been rubbing their face all over like flour or something um but yes this is monkey flower that sometimes we call it sticky monkey flower the botanical is mimulus um and also the way you'll know whether or not we have um native ones or not uh this one will have right on there there it is you'll see that California native sticker. So as you walk through the gardens uh, and you're wondering which ones are California natives, they'll have that sticker on them. And then also we've been putting the hummingbird summer um, stickers on everything. So if you're wondering if it's something that's gonna attract the hummingbirds, uh, you look for that sticker as well. So that will help you pick and choose. Um, and we also have beautiful hummingbird boxes. <laughs> See, I knew. Once I start talking and they get comfortable, they all start showing up. It's so funny. Um, yeah, look at that little, look at that little Alan up there. It is so tiny. 
sorry, I get so distracted. <laughs> um, but yeah, we sell these really beautiful kits too as well uh, that have different plants that will attract the hummingbirds and we'll have four inch mimulus in there as well. So uh, you can always just pick one of those up, super, super easy, has six plants in there, you're ready to go. Uh, so you'll have stuff to definitely attract. If you're doing hummingbird feeders, I always suggest make sure you have some plants, make sure you have something so they're getting a natural food source as well. Also, if you're putting new hummingbird feeders up and I have people a lot of times go, but they're not coming. It takes a while for them to figure it out, um, but putting in the plants will help bring them in too. So that will definitely catch their eye. So Mimulus monkey flower, sticky monkey flower uh, is the name of uh, today's plant. Do these plants do well in pots? Yeah, so you can definitely do them in pots. Just make sure that they have good drainage. So um, I would definitely stick to something like a cactus mix. Uh, you can even mix cactus mix with some regular potting soil. Um, straight, super fertile potting soil might be a little bit too much for them. A lot of times potting soil will have like a lot of peat and things like that that will uh, kind of hold the water in there. So you wanna make sure that it's not something that's gonna get too soggy. It's gotta have a drainage hole for sure. Make sure that you don't have it sitting in a saucer of its own water. Make sure that if you do anything, you put it up on some pot feet so that way you don't get a condensation ring underneath uh, your container. A lot of times people will put saucers underneath their containers because they're worried about um, messing up concrete or your stonework or something like that. But those create condensation rings because the water gets stuck up underneath there. So pot feet are definitely the way to go. That will lift it up. You will not have those condensation rings if you put pot feet underneath um, and that will help it drain really well too. But they do not want to be sitting in their own water so stick stay away from the uh the little saucer underneath that's a good rule of thumb for all of your pots uh get rid of all of those saucers i don't have saucers underneath any of my pots anymore they're all up on pot feet now and my concrete looks really nice if i ever have to move anything around any other questions is this plant pretty year round so it definitely is going to kind of go through a little bit of a scraggly stage, especially once we get into the winter time. You can always cut and prune to keep it looking pretty uh, through the seasons. Uh, it is not something that's going to require a lot of, um, I'm, I'm so hoping it comes up here. It's not something that's going to require a lot of uh, like extra pruning or anything like that. It's the beauty of it is kind of it's a little bit more wild looking. That's why I think it looks really good paired with succulents and stuff because you have that really like structured kind of stiff look of the succulents and this offers that kind of flowy flowery kind of uh, laciness to it which I think is really pretty um, in the winter time it is going to get a little kind of funky I mean that's kind of how things go but what will happen is you'll see the new growth coming out underneath and in the springtime you cut down to that new growth and you let it start all over again just like you do with your sages uh, so it is just a once a year kind of trim back but it's not something that requires a lot of fussing with deadheading and stuff when the flower dries it's kind of not very you know awful looking some things I think when you don't deadhead them they look really um, ugly and, and unattractive but this one doesn't really I mean if you wanted to go through and you're kind of one of those perfectionists that really need the plants to look nice all the time which I understand because I'm a little bit like that myself um, you can just pull those straight out uh, but there's no need to really cut and prune it because you can see I've got all this nice beautiful um, flowers on the end and it's not one um, that really like goes to seed or gets really kind of too rangy but giving that uh, springtime cut back will really help keep it look pretty and not let it get too woody. Uh, I think sometimes people like especially with their salvias they'll never cut them back and they just get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and they start to look really woody. So you definitely want to do that good cut back uh, with this in the springtime. Same thing with your salvia as well. Is it like a lantana? Um, they like similar uh, exposures. So it is totally a different plant than lantana. It's interesting because they do have kind of when they call it sticky monkey flower, it's got kind of a stickiness when you feel the leaves and the lantana definitely has kind of an interesting texture when you touch it. Uh, but two totally different plants, but they love the same kind of environment. So if you've got lantana and it's thriving, this will be happy there too. Um, and they pair really well because of that similar color. Uh, they always have that kind of like orangey kind of yellows, a little bit of the pinks, and this would pair really nicely. If you can imagine like how pretty would a nice blue salvia look with a nice pretty pink um, lantana 
um, planted next to this color. I mean, that coloration would just be so beautiful together and very similar requirements for sun and water, soil and all that kind of stuff. So uh, it's kind of nice that these all naturally go together very well. And like I said, we have the hummingbird boxes too. So you'll find lantana, you'll find salvias, you'll find monkey flowers in smaller forms in the little tiny containers. Um, in fact, I hid one over here. Look at this one. See? Look how pretty that is. Even enough orange container. Isn't that nice? Uh, this one is not a California native, but it's like the California natives, but it's a named varietal. Um, but isn't that pretty? So this would look so pretty with the purple with like little pretty pink um, lantanas that uh, pink bandana, which is my favorite one of the lantanas, would be super, super pretty together. So uh, if you come in for those four inch boxes, um, which have six of these little four inch in there, um, all picked and all already hummingbird approved, essentially, uh, you'll have all of the plants that you'll need to get them to come, especially if you're going to pick up a hummingbird feed or two. Uh, and those would all be great in containers as long as you have good draining soil. That's the big, the key thing with those as well. How tall do they get? So they're not particularly tall. It's going to depend on the variety. So like this one here, which is the non-California native, this is going to get to be about two feet, uh, two feet by two feet, maybe a little bit wider. Yeah, it does say just a teeny bit wider because um, they'll get kind of that sort of sprawling habit. Uh, but if you're doing the good cut down and not letting them get too woody, uh, they'll be good. Some of these other ones are gonna be a little bit smaller. Like this guy is definitely gonna be a little bit smaller here. Um, one to two, uh, same hit, uh, width and height with that. Um, whereas this one can get about two to two and a half, get a little bit bigger. This one can stay definitely a little bit smaller. Some of these are a little more sprawling in nature. Like I could tell this one instantly without even looking at this variety, but it's gonna be a little bit wider than it is going to be taller. Uh, so some of them will have a little bit more of an upright kind of growth habit and some of them will be a little bit more sprawly, which I think these varieties are the ones I think look really pretty mixed in with the succulents and stuff because they offer that kind of flowiness uh, to something with more structure. So when you're planting a garden, that's what you're always kind of looking for, something that has like kind of a, a bold, stiff structure with something that's a little bit more um, airy and offers a little bit of softness. You don't want everything to be too chaotic and too crazy. Uh, sometimes it's nice to have something that's a little bit more structured in the garden as well. And that's where I think succulents really come nicely into play, absolutely. So, okay, uh, if you've come in a little bit late, we're gonna go ahead and cut off now, but still put those questions down in there and we'll answer those questions for you. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. It's been super, super fun. I love the morning time when all the hummingbirds are absolutely going crazy and it seems like they really pick up again around three o'clock. It's, it's like once the hummingbird activity starts getting a little bit crazy in the afternoon, I look at my watch and I'm like, oh yeah, it's three o'clock. <laughs> so uh, it's really fun to come in. So bring your kids in so that way they can see all the different hummingbirds. We have about 40 different feeders all over the place as well, uh, which has been really fun. And then we've got all kinds of absolutely beautiful feeders here um, for the hummingbirds. On the 16th, the Sea and Sage Audubon Society is going to be here. Uh, they are our local chapter of the um, Audubon Society and they're a really great organization. They do a lot of really amazing education, uh, which really helps people understand how to plant and what to plant and how to you know go into the natural habitat areas and not disturb them too much. Uh, they'll have all kinds of beautiful photos and stuff. They have a lot of um, really great photographers uh, in the Audubon Society that are really good at capturing those really fast little hummingbirds. They are hard to get pictures of. Uh, so it's really kind of fun. They'll have all the different descriptions of the different types so they can help you identify the different kinds of hummingbirds you have in your garden, which is really fun. Um, here we typically have a lot of Allens and Annas. Uh, so they can tell you all about how to figure out which ones are the ones that you have in your garden so you can identify them as well. So it's a really great thing. Uh, it's really fun. It'll be on a Saturday, so it'll be a great thing to come in and visit and then pick out all of your hummingbird plants while you're here um, and then make sure that you sign up for our email uh, with our email listing we'll send out emails and give you all kinds of really great information about all the different fun things that we have going on here you'll know about all the specials and stuff before they happen so you don't stumble into it too late and you're like oh i missed it so uh that's always great we send out great videos and stuff too uh to give you all kinds of different education check out our youtube page it is just chock-a-block full of all kinds of amazing information information. Um, everything from plants to how to water your garden to how to care for things to Christmas trees to table settings all kinds of stuff recipes and all kinds of great things there as well so you can go if you've got some kind of question or something you're interested in I guarantee 
he we have a video for it um and then if you haven't already uh follow our instagram and our facebook page too because you'll get all that great information and you'll always know when the lives are happening as well because you'll get that notification too which is super cool so thank you so much for tuning in all the little critters are finally starting to show up i kind of feel like snow white so uh be well and be safe and happy gardening everybody bye